Oyat. I am preparing a book series called Millennial Parenting. The first book in the series is called The Groundwork for Parenthood. I am reading the entire series onto YouTube, one chapter per video, so that it is available to listen to for free. If you want the series in book form, the Kindle and paperback versions are on Amazon. In this video, I am reading Chapter 2 of Millennial Parenting Volume 1, The Groundwork for Parenthood. If you haven't yet, you may wish to begin with the introduction chapter and video. Let's begin. Principle 2. Punishment has no place in parenting or human life. It's not okay to punish another human being. It's not okay to allow another human being to punish you as you are able. It's not okay to punish your children because they are human beings. In the last chapter, I took physical assault off the table. But physical assault is only one way that parents punish. Parents punish with many other methods. Humiliation, timeouts, quote-unquote consequences, extra work, grounding, removal or granting of privileges, etc. When a human being makes a mistake... What is an appropriate response? What is the way forward? Many of us would say that punishment is an appropriate response and that we cannot go forward after a mistake until punishment has first been exacted. When our employee, our spouse, our child, our friends, ourself makes a mistake, First, we must imagine and carry out a punishment for that mistake. Why? If we don't punish, they won't be aware there is a mistake. If we don't punish, the retribu retribution of the pain they caused me will be unbalanced. If we don't punish, they won't learn or remember, thus they won't know right and wrong. When we punish, we pay for the mistake, and that makes it all better. These are a few of the justifications for punishment. There may be others. Another justification is that God punishes his children, so we should also. First of all, even if you assume a punishing God, which I do not. God does not punish. We punish ourselves if we want to or don't know any better. Please realize that God will punish the wicked. He does not punish mistakes or struggles. Wickedness and mistakes slash struggles are two different things. Small children, especially, cannot be wicked. Wickedness is a description of deep malaise and injustice in our society, including our families. And God assures that this will be healed, righted, and balanced. However, please remember that when Jesus interacted with human beings who sinned and were soiled, he accepted them and helped them to take a little step further. And as far as children were concerned, Jesus simply received them. Again, I am not invested in these texts, nor this justification. But I know many are. Thus, I am trying to make a crack in these accepted ideas, so that you can realize the best of them in order to bless your children instead of violate and harm them. While 
It is not okay to introduce pain or humiliation to your child's system. There is yet another great failure within the paradigm of punishment and the choice to organize child rearing and teaching around punishment. Even if your chosen method of punishment does not involve pain or humiliation, it will include this great failure. Punishment is transactional. If you do this, then this will happen. Your child will learn to relate to himself, you, others, all relationships, behavioral choices, and life in transactional terms. Punishment is blackmail. Punishment is coin or payment. For example, if a child has a desire to take a cookie without permission, she will consult the punishment. If I take the cookie, mom will yell at me and spank me three times. Hmm, that is fine. That is worth the cookie. The child is willing to pay the price, the given punishment price, in exchange for the desired behavior or item. I hope you can see the failure in this. When raised with punishments, the child does not learn how to make a decision by consulting his inner guidance of what is good or right. He simply makes a price check. Even if your child follows all the rules because she wishes to avoid all the punishments, and happens to manage that successfully until the age of 18. Nevertheless, punishment and transactional parenting results in a human being that requires external props for her behavior. Who is going to punish me now so that I know what to do and what not to do? I hope you can see that this person is not prepared to be an adult. Adults do not get and ought not to need external props, or on the other hand, the world is full of them to push us about. But if we cannot recognize them or act in spite of them, if we think they are normal, then we are stuck psychologically in a transactional childhood. We have not psychologically matured. Healthy adults, rather, have inner guidance. A child raised by punishment is reactive, not responsive. He checks to see or attempts to predict what the other person will do first, whether the other person in the given relationship, marriage, employment, etc., whether the other person will hurt, harm, provide a reward or carrot, or otherwise provide some kind of downside, i.e. punishment, in the relationship transaction. Once he has determined what the other person will do, only then can he make a choice of, quote, obeying or, quote, disobeying the expectation of the other, based on if the price is too high or just fine and payable. Thus, you can see that punishment does not and cannot teach right and wrong. A child raised mainly by punishment has no idea what is right and wrong. An adult who thinks the world is formed by punishment and reward is not capable of making personal decisions or commitments based on what she truly knows inside of herself. The behavior of this kind of adult is for sale. She will not act on what is right unless there is a wage for it. 
She will not avoid what is wrong when there is no one outside of herself ready to dole out the consequences. I'm sure you don't mean to give your child this legacy. Punishment and reward parenting is lazy parenting. It means that no other insight regarding one's child is being sought. One size fits all. Go to your room. Nor is there any willingness to labor with patience or struggle with a child until a solution to any problem in the child or the surrounding family environment is found and practiced. But I believe you are willing to go beyond the punishment paradigm and serve your child in a way that affects their greatest unfolding as a human being.